Good morning, First Congregational. How about that beautiful sunshine out there today? Isn't that nice? And there, you can actually feel warmth today. Uh, your morning announcements. Uh, please turn around and look toward the back of the sanctuary and enjoy the poinsettia tree that's in the back. Uh, those, there's a list of where those came from in your bulletin, so if you want to check that out. Uh, Christmas Eve service will be at 8 o'clock here in the sanctuary, so please mark that to make sure you're here for that. Uh, Judy would like to thank everyone except stewardship trustees and choir because we're late for some reason. So, uh, I didn't know. I, yeah, I thought mine was all done too, so uh, we'll get those reports right in to her. The January sermon series, January 2020, the vision year, let it go, can't hold back, hold it back anymore. Please join us in January for an exciting sermon series presented by Pastor Will. Are there any other announcements for the good and cause of the community? Because we have a huge day here today. Are there any other announcements? for the good and cause of the community. This church welcomes everyone, from the most senior of us to babies and squirmy toddlers who may cry and crawl under the pews. This church welcomes the faithful. This church welcomes the fallen. This church welcomes those who reach out and those who are so broken they cannot reach at all. This church welcomes young love and old wisdom and kids we welcome plenty of kids of all ages. This church welcomes you, wherever you are, whoever you are. Let's welcome the Spirit of God already among us here today, and to do so, let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for everyone participating in the Christmas pageant. We pray for Wyatt's baptism, and that the dedication of the sign to go smoothly. And a grateful congregation says, Amen. Please join in the intro, number 98 in your hymnals, and it's verse 1, Angels from the Realms of Glory. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Please be seated. And as you find your seats, our Lenten journey this year has been woven with music. And I invite you to look into your bulletin this morning and you'll see a white half sheet that says light of light. Let me explain what's going to happen for everyone here this morning. The choir is going to be introducing this beautiful piece of music. And I know how much everyone loves Christmas music, right? And I know that everyone deep in your heart has always wanted to be a part of a choir, right? I'm just seeing your heads nod. Even if they're not, I took out my contact lens. During this anthem that the choir will introduce and close, guess who has a part in the middle? That's right. So I will cue you from here to join the choir in singing what you'll find on this half sheet. You'll be introduced to the melody throughout the piece. Again, when you look to me and I do one of these great, grandeur, y'all want to sing things, join us, please. Very simple. It's actually more complicated to explain than to listen to. Light of Lights.
I draw your attention now to the lighting of the Advent candles. The candle of hope symbolizes what Jesus brought to the world. His birth gave us a way to regain our relationship with God. Hope brings light into our lives, letting our hearts shine. Two candles are lit today, hope and peace. Peace is never easy to keep. Peace of mind comes when Jesus enters our lives. As Christ gives us peace, we can spread it into the world. Joy is in the world around us and everything God created. We are joyful for all the beauty we see. Eternal life is a promise to be joyous at all times. Love so, a love so strong and a willingness to die for all mankind brought Jesus to the earth. We learn to love from many people. We are called to share God's love with the world. We celebrate, Christ, celebrate Christ's birthday. anthem this morning, our first hymn this morning is number 98, which is in your maroon hymnal, number 98. We will sing verses 2, 3, and 5, Angels from the Realms of Glory. This is one of um, our choir's favorite pieces, and we invite you to now rise as you're able for this beautiful Christmas hymn, Angels from the Realms of Glory.
morning, please join with me as we read our confession printed in the bulletin. We just sang, gather all the nations to him, every knee shall bow down. We don't gather around Jesus enough, certainly we don't bow down, not when it comes to having our way. It's our Christmas, not Jesus. Hear us, dear Lord, as we silently share our sins with you now. Lord, hear us as we realize in this sacred time and place that your Son is with us and that with him here, our sinful lives are no more for each of us in our own place and space recognize fully the meaning of the cross and what it means to each of us. Our sins are no more. Thanks be to God. Amen. It is that time in our service where I invite all of the children to come forward in preparation for the baptism that's about to happen. So may I please have all people who, all little people, would like to come forward before the family joins us here. So any little tyke that would like to come forward and bless this water, you are welcome to do so. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. You can stay put if you want to. I'm just asking for some help with the blessing of the water. Thank you. Good morning. How are you, buddy? Good. Your tall friend over here has an important job to do. But so do you. And so do all of us. Because each of us is here this morning to understand anew what it means to be a part of God's world. And if I were to sneeze, what would you say? Thank you. Perfect. Blessing people is what this season is about because the greatest gift is joy. Would you gentlemen please come here? I'm asking you to bless the water that is in here. Would you please put your hands for me on here? Thank you. I invite all of us, children of God, to join in this very simple prayer. Holy and gracious God, we bless this water for this beautiful baptism. In your name's sake we pray. Amen. Thank you, boys. A gift that came to us as a church earlier this year is literal water, actual water, from the Jordan River. And as the oldest brother... Would you do the honor of adding this water to our baptismal font? Just a sprinkle or two will work. And buddy, you can go right back with your buddy here, Miss Sharon. Thank you, sir. Hunter, yeah, you can take a seat. Cody, I would like you to stay planted. Invite everybody else up for me. Would you do that for me? Invite them up. Mom, dad, godparents, come on up. As the parents and godparents are moving their way forward, I want to extend a great and warm welcome to all of you who traveled some distance as part of this amazing family here this morning. Thank you for all being a part of this baptism this morning. It's great that you are all here. Welcome. The rite of baptism, Mr. and Mrs. Parson, has been in the plan since the two of you were the two of you. And we look to people as examples of what faith is. And you are examples of what faith is. Because not only is this the baptism of number three, this is also, in a way, a rededication of who you are as husband and wife. And your commitment is to be valued and honored here. Thank you for bringing us the honor of the baptisms of your children. And Mr. Wyatt, who's ready to go splashing now? <laughs> For any of you in the back, you're missing super cute, and let's get wet. Hagen View, stop, let's go. All right, the blessing of the holy water. Questions for the parents. You've already answered them by your simply being here and present. We thank you as a congregation for being a part of the congregation. 
Ashley and Josh with the gift and the acknowledgement of the Holy Spirit within each of you. Do you promise to continue to raise your boys in the presence, in the company, and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ? If so, say, we do. Thank you. Awesome people are right behind you, Miss Ashley. Key players to the whole. Not one person has the truth to the gospel message. Your stories that are beautiful and painful, and you know that more than anyone else, enable you to be the perfect godparents to this boy. Thank you for being a part of his life. Thank you for being a part of his spirituality and his upbringing. I encourage you gently and securely and completely to continue to love on this little boy and to share your faith experiences of strength and struggle, which is what happens in our New and Old Testament. There are stories that are didactic of success and there are stories of, of longing and well. Tell your story to this boy. And may your blessings be upon you and this beautiful God, Son, that you've been given. I'd like to do a prayer over you too now. Heavenly Father, we ask for blessings upon the godparents and the parents and the grandparents and the aunts and the uncles and everyone else here that this baptism on this beautiful Christ-like day help us renew our faith. In your name we pray. Amen. Questions for the congregation. Would you please rise as you are able? It takes a village. Especially it takes a village in this day and age. And none of us are perfectly equipped to do this job. But all of us together have the right and the responsibility to be present to this young man and to each other as we continue as one community to grow into the community of faith together. By your standing on your feet here this morning, you are affirming the rite of baptism. You are celebrating your faith journey along with Wyatt's, and I ask that God continue to bless you on your roads. And I ask that as you are able to be present to the world and baptizing it in great and universal love, that you, by hard and wonderful and complete design by the God above, to walk further into faith, and if so, please say we do with the help of God. Thank you. Kids got a great team. You may be seated. Handsome, 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 handsome. As ordained clergy in good standing with the United Church of Christ, it is my honor and it is my privilege to speak to your soul, because I know you're hearing every word, and to bless and to baptize you, Wyatt Jeffrey Parsons, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I just want to introduce you all to the latest baptized child in the world. And if you think there aren't miracles, if you think the world spins and we have no control over it, if you think darkness wins, you're wrong. If, however, your heart is beating strongly in your chest, if you look at this baby and see a miracle unfolding, then you understand in part the joy of our Christ as a newborn king. God sent his son into the world to light our way, not as a raging warrior, but as a newborn, not in some high place, but in a lowly manger. This is the story of Christ in you, as this is the story of Christ in White Jeffrey Parsons. Amen. Doesn't get any better than this, you two. You four and you five. Thank you. There are a gift of flowers, Bonnie. Bonnie is our Christian education director. She's also a deacon. And she will double as a florist whenever and wherever you need her. I know her. I wouldn't hire her. She's the director of the show, and she did not give me the, the costume or the role or the time or the lighting. So. Nor does the heat set at 71 degrees. So, yes, I, I perhaps I feel. 
Congratulations, everyone. We, again, are grateful that all of the family has been present to this. As Bonnie is finishing the passing out of the flowers, I draw your attention to the prayer after the baptism. And I invite you to have that sheet ready. We'll read this collectively in a moment. BYOC. Bring your own copy. Thank you. Would you please join with me in this prayer? Lord, thank you for the precious gift of baptism that we can publicly declare our love and passion for you. Lord, we ask for your goodness and blessings to be poured out on this faithful servant. Guide Wyatt's footsteps. Give him a hope and a vision for the future. Cover and protect him and his family and all of us. Encircle this day with your promises and fill our hearts with joy in the promise of the newborn king. May this day be one to cherish and remember forever. Amen. I invite you to look at this poem at your leisure in the back. I would just like to have one more closing prayer upon the family. Lord, holy and gracious one, your angels have been and continue to be a part of this family. And we lift up Aunt Bethany, whose name is close to all of us who've known her. And there are other angels here this morning as well, O oh gracious God. And you call us into this heavenly place, imperfect though we are, to be present to you, the newborn king through this beautiful gift named Wyatt. And the people say, Amen. Congratulations, everybody. You may take your seats. Mama. Mr. Parsons. Our anthem is called Tiny Baby Love Divine.
And now the choir, which I didn't share with you all, are going to sit so you can see the pageant. FYI, the choir is always telling me what to do, and this moment of telling them what to do is amazingly joyful. So you can watch the, uh, the presentation of the sign and the pageant itself here. Too. At this time, I invite your attention to um, our Pew Bibles. On page 522, you will catch our reading, our lectionary passage this morning. Again, in your Pew Bible, page 522, I invite you to share those with your neighbor. We have been in the gospel, it's been the gospel of Isaiah, the Old Testament. And this morning we are continuing with our text, Isaiah chapter 7, verses 10 and following. The word of God. Later, the Lord sent this message to King Ahaz. Ask the Lord your God for a sign of confirmation, Ahaz. Make it as difficult as you want, as high as heaven or as deep as the place of the dead. But the king refused. No, he said, I will not test the Lord like that. Then Isaiah said, listen well, you royal family of David. Isn't it enough to exhaust human patience? Must we exhaust the patience of my God as well? All right, then. The Lord himself will give you the sign. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. By the time this child is old enough to choose what is right and reject what is wrong, he will be eating yogurt and honey. For before this child is that old, the land of the two kings you fear so much will both be deserted. May God bless the reading and the hearing of this, his holy word, and the people say, Amen. New beginnings. It's that time of the year for such a thing, for such a whimsical thing as the boldness that it takes for us all to think about new beginnings. From baptism to ancient scripture to children's pageant to an unveiling of a sign, New Beginnings is not just the narrative of some. It's the story for all of us. And this is the time for it to happen. Now, how can we have New Beginnings? We've been around this planet before. We've seen some things before. I don't know who has missed the local or national news lately. It invades us now as a culture. You can't escape the world in which we live. So Hagenview, got a question for you. How do things, how can things be new when the world that I'm seeing is nothing but new? Good question. Answer. I got a homily this week, so my sermon is much, much, much shorter. There's so much to the text that you heard. If you read or followed along in that text and you had a what moment within the scripture itself? You're not alone because there's so much that needs to be shared about this scripture that today I don't have time for. You should all be breathing a sigh of relief. I have a 45 page slideshow I could share on King Ahaz. I'm kidding. Scripture is not dead. Scripture is not irrelevant. Do we all look like Ahaz sometimes when we feel challenged and yet still want control? Ahaz said simply is being squished from multiple angles. Most of us actually wait, no, it's the 22nd day of December. All of us are squished somewhere, right? All the wrapping is done. All the baking is done. All of the gifts are done. All of you should be doing like, yeah. So we're feeling squished, each of us. Somehow, somewhere, each of us is feeling squished. And what makes this text so poignant this morning is that Ahaz is feeling squished and he makes a decision to ignore the God with him. And so do we. Each and every one of us. 
there's this thing called control that we all want. We may not say that, we may not want to think that, but somewhere along the way, none of us wants to lose control. All of us, to some extent, are like our director of the pageant this morning, Bonnie Love Caldwell. We like to call the shots. Some of you like surprises in your life. I am not one of those people. Do not surprise me. But none of us like those major shock surprises. We like what? Control. We like to know. We like no surprises, no bumps, no rocking boats. This is what we want and this is what we're going to do to get it. This is the pattern of the world in which we live. And then this baby comes along. This baby and his birth, which were foretold long, 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 long before there was a Mary who heard a whisper in the voice of an angel. What is amazing and beautiful and true is that the scripture that you heard predates Jesus' birth by centuries and centuries and centuries. And this king heard what you are hearing today, which is that there is this king who is coming, who will change your life if you choose to let go. If you remember Craig this morning during the opening announcements, Letting It Go is a sermon series. Again, I've got this much time this morning, but in the weeks of January to come, each of us can be on a very specific journey to let go of things that need to be let go of. Maybe it's too much grief. Not grief, too much grief. Maybe it's a family dynamic that is just way too long and way too hard. Maybe it's the feeling that we are not worthy. Maybe we're feeling empty. Maybe we're lost. Maybe peer pressure is pushing us into places that we don't want to be pushed, but hey, I'm a cool junior high kid or senior high kid, so I can make it. Each of us, like Ahaz, can let it go. This thing called control is not for you. You get it here, but you get it here. You can say to me with absolute confidence, I know who's in charge and it's God. But do you know it here? Because when we know it here, his kingdom is in our hearts. His direction is in our lives. And his peace reigns through you into a world, as you know, that needs peace. Heavenly Father, show us the signs of you being here. Help us understand that, yes, it is possible through King Ahaz and all of us together here this morning that new beginnings are possible, that the message of God is present, that scripture is not dead, that you are alive, that we are not lost, that we are not abandoned, that we are not alone, that we don't have to be scared, but faithful. Heavenly Father, we bless the birthday of the newborn king and long to let it go so that you can be God. Amen. The birthday of a king is our next hymn. Please rise as you're able. 136.
may be seated. It is now our time for joys and concerns. And I'm seeing new love out there. I'm seeing old love out there. I'm seeing family love everywhere. I'm seeing Christmas here. And it is a joy that each and every one of you are here this morning. It is our time for joys, and this past Sunday, uh, we were present, the choir was present, and the stewardship committee to the HVA. That was a ho, ho, ho fun time. Um, other joys we have this morning. Um, I've been on a seven-year journey, and I couldn't hide it very well from this congregation. And I will share more about this joy in this Christmas Eve sermon but we need the personal witness of scripture to make it relevant and real, right? We can talk the talk, but what's the story behind it, right? Come Christmas Eve and I will share the greatest joy that I've experienced in my life. Other joys we have this morning. Joanne Titus is remarkable. Joanne Titus will need some help opening her gifts on Christmas because Joanne Titus, who found it joyful that her handsome, grandson Evan who has been in the military and remains doing incredibly well in the military brought home this big something or another like a duffel bag thing that's like anyway Joanne saw the saw the duffel bag maybe definitely saw the Christmas tree Joanne has broken her it, it is the wrist but there's like lots of cast it's the arm, it's the arm. And I visited Joanne last night. It's between the break is here. And I visited Joanne last night. And, you know, I'm pretty good on my feet, mostly. But, like, I'm kind of, she's like, don't come near me. So, um, yeah, FYI, if you break something and it hurts, don't let me come near you. Prayers for Joanne in her health journeys. Um, other updates on prayer uh, requests that we have in the bulletin before we add new. DS3. You are adding, go ahead, mess up the system. I'm, 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 go, David Schulte. Thank you, David. For prayers for two teachers and their losses and those who are away. Updates or additions to the prayer chain this morning. Julie, please update us on your sister. Update on your sister's surgery and prayers for Hollis, an amazing angel among us. Other additions or updates? Mom. Adam Diaz. Adam Diaz. Anyone else? Any? Teresa. The Thank you, Teresa. The Payne family. Grandma? Did you say? Uh, anyone else? Sharon France. Amen. Sharon has a good health report. Thank you. Praise the Lord for that. Yes. Let us turn to God now in prayer. Holy and gracious God, you enter our lives in mysterious ways. You enter our life in joyful ways. And some of us here this morning are carrying some very heavy weight, doubt, or darkness, addiction, fear, frustration, 
family dynamics, peer relationships, the government, our nation as a whole, our president. Lord, we trust you. We open ourselves to you. And at this Christmas time, we open ourselves to new beginnings. There was an unspoken prayer request that came this week that reached us electronically. We lift up that situation. Karen Jones is asking for brother, prayers for her brother, Kurt. David is asking for prayers for two teachers who are experiencing losses at this time. He also adds that we should hold in prayer those who are away at Christmas time. We are grateful, gracious one, for sisterhood with Julie and her sister, Sandy, and continued prayers to Sandy as she continues her journey. And speaking of journeys, we pray for Joanne Titus. And speaking of journeys, we pray for chauffeur, amazing angel among us, Hollis Lewis. We pray this morning for Adam Diaz and the Payne family. And we pray, O oh, gracious God, for Sharon France and her wellness and her report and her faith. And Lord, we pause now for a moment and pray for someone or something that is on our hearts that just needs to be raised to you. We thank you for holy silence in a crazy time of the year. We thank you for the birth of a son and the rebirth of us as we come to understand you in peace and in miracle and in the baptism of an amazing young boy. And Lord, we pray now this prayer that your son taught us when together we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs> Ushers, please come forward. Karen, Teresa.
Gracious Father, three in one God, Ahaz had a choice and he did not hear you. We hear you this morning through our hearts and through these gifts, and we turn ourselves to new beginnings and ask for blessings upon the ministry of this and other churches, that they reach the community, that your light prevail, and that your love is present always. Thank you for these gifts, O oh gracious, gracious one, and in your name we say, Amen. Angels, we have heard on high. Today, after three long years of planning and working and making things come together, we are able to say that we can dedicate our front yard church sign. And this scripture is very fitting for this, I feel. And it's Matthew 7, 7. Ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. How many doors will this open for us? 
How many doors are we going to open with our live streaming and with our Facebook Live? Um, there's so many things that the church is going forward with, and this sign is one of the pieces of that puzzle to go forward. At this time, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank a couple people. Um, Clayton Brumby from uh, Stewart Signs has been instrumental in designing this sign and the crew that came up here at the last minute. The sign was designed for us to be able to install and something went different in engineering and they had to fly two guys in here to install it at the last minute. So uh, there's been some, some challenges on the way and isn't that true with everything that God leads you to do? It's not just an easy road, there are challenges. Uh, Judy and Julia for the office info that we needed to press on to, to get the process done. Thanks to Bill Chichester, Harry Gardner, Will, Gus Pereira, Tim Fiducek for unloading the sign, loading the sign, um, Bennett's Garage for helping unload the sign and store it there for a while, um, and all of you for the faith that it took to do this project uh, would come to fruition and to be another step in this church pushing forward. So now, as we go forward, and like I said, we're, tr we're trying some different things. One of the things is live streaming onto YouTube, and now another one is we're going to be able to see the dedication of this sign live from the front yard with Pastor Will dedicating this sign. I'm just taking a, a few seconds here because there's a delay, so it should be okay. You're good to go? Thank you. Please join with me in hymn 31. Please stand and rise and join in hymn 31 to God be the glory because that's what we do all the work for.
Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, for your blessings and your peace upon this day, upon this season, upon this reason for celebrating. There's a sign out there and there's also a sign within each of us to love you and to walk boldly into the new beginning and the perfect plan that you have for us. When we lose our control, submit and turn our lives to you, this newborn king. And in the blessing of the baby, and in the peace of a world that begins with you, go forward into this world as a sign of God's love in the world. Amen.